Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at the August giveaway knife for the Gentleman Junkies. Four notable slip joints from uh, various companies, modern that is, and then we take a look at the full Jack Wolf Knives lineup. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week was from Jimmy Cricket 7946, and he was commenting on my embarrassing paper cut test. Uh, it was a short video where I threw up a piece of paper, and with my um, Predator Hunter Puzan Bowie thing, which is gigantic, swung at that paper. I did end up cleaving it, but it looked ridiculous in the end. And uh, Jimmy Cricket says, this is exactly the kind of stuff I still do even at age 44. And I'm telling you, I almost have you by a decade, sir. So you got uh, plenty of years ahead of you of goofiness, if that is what is in store. All right. Well, thanks for the comment, Jimmy Cricket. And uh, thanks for all the comments, one and all, uh, and for watching and leaving likes and all of that on the videos. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. All right. So uh, all that said, let's get to a pocket check. Today in the front right, I had the Artisan Accelerator, a Mike Snowdy design. Uh, this thing is a beast. It is a large knife. Uh, I think most people would consider it so. If you're into the Cold Steel uh, XLs, uh, well, this is just sort of an EDC size for you. But this is a nearly four-inch blade. You've got that harpoon drop point. Very nice-looking blade. Uh, reminds me kind of of a dinosaur, I got to say, just the look of it. Uh, and then you have, speaking of cold steel, a handle with with very generous uh, scooping and uh, choiling for the fingers. And uh, so you can really lock in right here uh, between those two, between that uh, pinky and forefinger um, bracket there. And then you can come forward up here onto the guard and use really take advantage of the um, harpoon there and uh, and use the knife like this. Uh, this is an AR RPM nine the proprietary artisan powder uh, powder metallurgy steel, uh, which seems excellent. I've done, uh, you know, nothing that would stress out this steel, but I've heard from our trusted voices that AR RPM 9 is a great uh, budget powder metallurgy steel. Maybe not budget, let's say high value. Uh, so I carried that around with me today. Uh, this is one that I do like to take out and um, this is uh, works as an emotional support knife when sitting at my desk. Uh, the action on it is incredible on those bearings. And then, of course, that large blade, uh, which is, you know, somewhat relatively heavy, swings back into the handle very nicely uh, on that knife. OK, second, I had uh, speaking of Jack Wolf knives, I had the new laid back Jack in my front left. Well, actually, it, it volleyed around. Sometimes I carry it in my back pocket. Uh, the slip joints, but I got the one, the beautiful um, Rosewood edition. The uh, latest, uh, the second edition of the laid back jack has a few little tweaks, a few little changes. Uh, we'll talk about the covers first. It comes in five covers. Two of them are exotic carbon fibers. Two of them are titanium, one sort of plain Jane and one jigged. And then you've got that beautiful purple uh, um, Kieranite with the uh, Black blade and the black titanium. That's pretty sweet looking. And then this. This to me is the most uh, gentlemanly of all of them. And it's got this hand rub blade, which actually is interesting because it makes the nail nick more necessary. It sort of takes the sharp edge off of this top grind um, where the high, uh, full height hollow grind meets the spine on all the other jack wolves uh, that don't have this sort of hand rubbed grind there or hand rubbed uh, polish uh you can you can easily catch your fingers right on the spine there to pull it open this one requires a bit more strength on the pinch or you just uh put, use that nail neck uh i'm gonna come over here to the to the mic for a second 
exquisite walk and talk on this one. Uh, here, I'll come back over here. You can't really tell from the mic, but you can see from the uh, the action here. It's a nice stout spring as usual. I would put this at about a seven and a half, seven and three quarters, perhaps. Um, on the new redesign here, it's not a redesign. It's a version two, a second edition. It's got a much more generous uh, or, or makes more generous the already generous sharpening choil. And it extends the bolster into a sort of a barlow there. And then you've got a, a triple fluting there on that bar on that uh, bolster. I meant bolster. Yeah, bolster, a barlow bolster. That's what this is. That's what that is. All right, I'm going to stop talking. M390 blade steel on this and just an absolute beauty. Thank you, uh, Ben Belkin, not only for your amazing knives, but for sending sending this to me. Um, it's greatly appreciated. That wood, ah, so beautiful. And I, I should note uh, that we've spoken a lot with Ben, and and I've asked him about natural materials, wood, bone, etc. And he has said in the past that it's a real gamble uh, because the knives are assembled overseas in a different temperature, different humidity, and then they are are shipped and they go through all these different uh, sort of environmental changes. And with natural materials, they are more likely to warp or shrink. Uh, and so he was always hesitant about that, but I guess they worked around it with the rosewood, a very common wood used on the fretboards of guitars. So robust uh, and beautiful, no doubt. Okay, next up uh, in my hip, uh, riding up front um, in um, appendix carry was the Pinkerton Fire Ant. I have been uh, very much, pardon me for the, coffee sip there i've been very much uh, into carrying knives on the belt horizontally recently actually this would probably make a very good candidate for that uh, primarily with the tkel knives i've been doing that but uh, today i went back to the old standard uh, which which is the um, appendix formerly the three o'clock position uh, this beauty i got at blade show this year i have a piece of bike um, inner tube around here because only one screw will fit in this and and uh, this also keeps it from uh, sliding around in my belt and changing uh, orientation. All right, here we have a gorgeous triple edged Warncliffe blade here, set at an at a downward angle uh, from the handle, which has these beautiful blue black rich light scales, which are contoured. Rich light is kind of like a paper micarta. D2 blade steel, beautifully hand ground by Dirk Pinkerton. Uh, you know, Dirk has so many designs in production with some of our favorite companies, um, folders mostly. Uh, but he makes these exquisite handmade knives in his own shop. And I've, I've got a couple of them. I've got three of them. And I want that uh, to expand. I love his handmade knives. They're, they're incredible. Um, his grinding is just Really, really even Steven, and he's uh, he's well known among his peers for that. This has three edges because why not? Uh, you got a nice sharp edge here. These are hollow ground edges here. Oh no, those are flat. So uh, sharp, 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 and you're good to go. A uh, nice short handle, which makes it easy to carry in the waistband, uh, but I can still get a full four finger grip. And in reverse grip, I have this nice peak to wrap my thumb around. So this is an awesome knife. Uh, the Fire Ant, you might recognize the name. The Fire Ant is also a folding design that he has in production with Kaiser knives. I'm not sure if that's uh, still in production or if that's been discontinued. That was uh, uh, earlier in his collaborations with Kaiser. Hmm. For emotional support, my ESK, my emotional support knife was the... Um, Vostede Nightshade, a beautiful uh, shillin cutter, modern shillin cutter. And what is the shillin cutter you say? Yeah, I said the same thing. I used to say, oh, it's like a barong blade on a tilt. And people be like, it's a shillin cutter. Have you not watched the videos? Have you not done your research? And uh, to that, I say, yeah, I, I did. I probably just forgot because, you know, 50, almost 52 here, man. Uh, but this is a shillin cutter, a modern shillin cutter. That is a... Um, a Chinese slip joint work knife uh, shaped much like this with that leaf-shaped barong-shaped blade. Uh, 
that they stole and put on the shilling cutter and uh it's downward angled uh, so that the tip is below the center line which uh is definitely the unique selling proposition of this uh as a modern you know uh, edc work folder uh, that that really ac accelerates the cut uh, if you're pulling back on it cutting um rope or straps or something like that uh, the material gets trapped in that area right there uh, and and then when you're using it like this it's like using a kukri almost <clears throat> it's almost like using a kukri you have that uh, downward um, canted edge with the big belly the point down low you can use that point for all sorts of utility tasks etc cetera, etc cetera. but what did i use it for uh, cutting a sandwich in half which it did with incredible ease and uh emotional support and i needed it today but i i got out i got out at the end of the day um all all's well and this helped nice contour g10 scales love the night shade and now they have it in a number of different iterations including a luxury edition uh with m390 blade steel uh titanium bolsters and uh and scales a g10 i think my card up probably and you can get it in the mini uh if you really like this knife check out uh stasa he's he's covered it uh exhaustively he loves the the nightshade so this is what i had on me today what did you have on you drop it in the comments below let me know you know i always like to find out what all you classy folk are carrying um and in the meantime let me show you what you could be carrying if you become a gentleman junkie, or if you are a gentleman junkie, uh, this is the August knife giveaway here. Uh, this is the off grid knives, grizzly, a really awesome kitchen camp knife. Um, you may have heard that catch in my throat. I don't want you to think this is a camp knife. Like you're going to be batoning logs with it and chopping down trees. This is uh, you know, you could use this as a light machete, no doubt, but this is for like camp around the camp tasks like food prep especially and um i have taken the this is the v2 this has some improvements i've taken the v1 many times on vacation to the place we go up in the mountains that has a kitchen but really crap craptacular cutlery uh and and the grizzly one works so great this one is an improvement in that uh well they've changed the steel from uh aus 8 to 14 c 28 n we love that blade steel. Uh, uh, they have increased the length of the jimping by an inch up the spine. So as far as my thumb can reach now, I have jimping, which is nice. Um, and they have fully flat ground the blade now. Uh, the V1 it was very high flat ground and very thin behind the edge, but this is even more. So very, very thin and cutty, slicey, choppy. You know, this will be great for... I mean, like kitchen cutting board choppy or, or camp cutting board choppy. Now, the handle they they took from something that was very blocky um, and still comfortable, but it was blocky and ridged. So not as comfortable as this nicely rounded, contoured handle. The handle is so comfortable now and thinner and lighter. The whole thing is lighter, uh, not only because it's fully flat ground and there's less steel up front, but I think that they did. I haven't removed the scales, but I think they did more weight relief there. So we are giving this away uh, to, to a lucky gentleman junkie. And wait, let me show you the, the sheath. Wait, wait, there's more. The sheath is really nice. It's a taco fold over sheath with a nice thumb push off, which is kind of essential if you're going to wear this with the dangler, you know, uh, unless you have it tied to your leg Rambo style, uh, you're going to need this little thumb push off so you don't have to reach around with the other hand to keep the sheath in place while you draw the knife. So there it is. Be a gentleman junkie and it could be all yours. All right. Uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to uh, look at some stories in Knife Life news. And, uh, and then of course, uh, the state of the collect. Coming up right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives.
That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Speaking of knives, uh, there's a company I love called Tops Knives, and they have re-released uh, what was their first folder. No, 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 that's to- that is completely not true. Their first flipper. Uh, okay, but it is based on this knife right here. Let me show you this real quick. This was kind of a uh, a really big knife for them when it came out. Uh, this came out right after their Brothers of Bushcraft, which was was their first Scandi ground knife, and uh, it came out to a lot of applause and some some pearl clutching because they put a secondary edge on that scandy edge, like a little relief edge. <gasps> oh, it was a big deal, uh, but they seem to weather that storm and uh, they make a lot of scandy ground blades. Now, this one is awesome. This is a neck knife called the MSK mini scandy knife. So they turned this into a flipper and uh, they have updated that flipper. Let's take a look at it. So they've gone from this uh, note, the, drop point shaped blade here. And now let's take a look at this story. Um, that was the shape blade of the originally of the original Scandi flipper. Well, they've updated things now. Uh, they've removed the micarta. They've gone with a milled G10. Looks nice. Looks kind of like all business. And uh, they've changed that to a clip point uh, shape blade, which you know I love. I love a clip point uh, style blade. That's 3.25 inches of, wait for it, L Max replacing the N690 before because these are made in Italy uh, and you know how Italy loves N690. Uh, they but they they've upgraded to uh, L Max here and you can see with that clip point blade and the flipper action and the G10, it's going to be I don't know I think it's going to beat beat the old one. It looks like a, it looks like a winner. Uh, so that is available now. You can go check that out. Uh, I, I believe they released that at Blade Show this year. All right. Next up, let's take a look at Giant Mouse. They have the Jutland, another clip point. Very, very good looking clip point. I love that knife. Um, I don't have it, but I love it. Even the shape of the handle is pleasing to me, not only to the eye, but it looks like it would be comfortable in the hand. Well, they are now offering 500 pieces of this beautiful knife, the Jutland, in Venatus 4E. Venatus 4E is known for its super toughness. It's got it's got pretty high edge retention, but it's a super tough steel. Uh, so an interesting choice for a folder. We don't usually think of folders as needing super tough steels, but that doesn't really matter. We get a lot of 3V folders. It's the luxury, it's the it's the clout of the steel. And it's the usefulness of the steel. I mean, just just because it's uh, perhaps more suited to a larger fixed blade, uh, it still works great in a little folder. So uh, nice contoured, deep brown um, uh, burlap micarta scales there. You see that loop over clip. Everything, all of the hardware except for that backspacer is black. And you've got that nice uh, coating on the blade too. Uh, so... Looks beautiful. These are available now, and like I said, only 500 made. So if you're a um, a giant mouse fan, you better get to it because there are a lot of them out there, and not too many of those knives. Okay, next up, Vostid. We were just talking about Vostid with the uh, Schillen cutter here with the uh, night ha- with the nightshade well they have a new collaboration uh and it's already been sold out once so they're coming out with a whole new batch of them it, it kind of flew off the shelves uh so this is called the vostid rs chaos i'm assuming that's how it's pronounced r s k a o s well it's uh by designer robert sanisalchi r s so i'm assuming it's the r s chaos um this is their first big name collaboration and uh, it is their going to be their new flagship. So it's going to come with two different blade styles, uh, two point, or I'm sorry, 3.3 inch sheep's foot or Warncliffe. And if you can see in the picture here, that sheep's foot there is uh, dual ground. It's got a very long portion of what looks like hollow ground uh, straight. And then at the very uh, heel of the blade, right near the sharpening choil, it get, looks like it gets real wide into a, a real oblique. 
like almost a scanty ground edge there. Uh, probably more form over function. I don't know. They don't give you very much of that extra heavy grind there. But then we come down to this beautiful Warren Cliff. Same thing. You got a little bit of really stoutly ground. Uh, I think it's just for flair uh, towards the finger choil. And then you have that nice, long, straight, uh, hollow ground uh, Warren Cliff blade there. Now, note the the lock button um, near the spine of the handle there. That is not a uh, that is not a button lock. That is a top liner lock. So just think of a um, compression lock, basically with a button, like they did with the smock, like Spyderco did with the smock. So that's what you're looking at there. It it looks incredibly comfy in hand. I I'm I gotta say I'm not a huge fan of all of the grooves carved into it. Uh, maybe on the handle for ergonomics, not so much on the blade. But I know that this is uh, Robert Sanisalci's uh, style. It's part of his uh, calling card and and uh, stylistic calling card. So that's that's part of it. Uh, very popular knife. So take a look. Uh, it will be coming out soon. Uh, they're not sure when. M390 blade steel. And of course, titanium handle material. All right. Uh, last up, uh, Knife Rights has won another little battle, uh, or, you know, and all these little battles uh, will win the war. This one in Hawaii. Uh, and uh, on a personal note, my, my, uh, my, my, my empathy, my sympathy, my best wishes go to the people of Hawaii as they have uh, suffered a pretty nasty, horrible um, wildfire. Um, but this is uh, knife news here. And the Ninth Circuit Court holds Hawaii's butterfly knife ban unconstitutional. I'm going to read you two little bits from this Knife Rights article. Today, that was on August 7th, a panel of the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit held that Hawaii's ban on butterfly knives violates the Second Amendment. Knife Rights filed an important amicus brief, that's a friend of the court brief, in support of the appellants in the case of Teeter versus Lopez. And uh, and so this is Knife Rights attorney John Dillon. We hear his name come up a lot in these articles. And this is what he said. He said, we applaud the Ninth Circuit decision in Teeter versus Lopez. Butterfly knives, like any other variation of folding pocket knives, are protected arms under the Second Amendment. This decision supports our recent challenges to city, state and federal knife bans, whether they like it or not. Governments throughout America will be forced to understand that they cannot ban common arms here here sir mr john dillon thank you very much you know can't couldn't say it any better so that that is a, a, a bit of good news uh, again on the knife rights front okay still to come on the knife junkie podcast we're going to take a look at the full jack wolf knives line as it stands um, i think they are doubling back and starting to um, change older design, the, the first designs and give us great new versions of old design. So I wanted to catalog what they've come out with, but I realized this whole past year plus I've been all Jack Wolf knives all the time when it comes to slip joints. So I want to, I want to show five notable slip joints, um, from modern companies. That's all coming up on the knife junkie podcast. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. These five knives that I'm going to show, notable modern slip joints. Um, let's start with this one right here. This is the Fox made, uh, Mike Latham designed. Mike Latham's the guy who owns and runs Collector Knives. He does a lot of designing. Uh, this is the Gunstock. And it's a really nice uh, production here. That's M390 blade steel, very nicely, thinly ground clip point, classic um, slip joint clip point blade there. And then a single bladed gun stock uh, handle, which is so nice because uh, like I often comment on single bladed 
slip joints, you can really feel the full ergonomics of that handle. And why is that designed like that? Well, not just because it looks cool and not because it's evocative of a gun stock. If you turn it like that, it looks like a cowboy gun stock, right? Uh, but because it's ergonomic, your fingers fit in there and it gives you very positive retention, especially when cutting back, you know, you've, you've got this little lip there. It's almost like a halfway point uh, bird's beak. Uh, but this one has very nice uh, titanium bolsters. All this is uh, titanium uh, hardware here. And you've got a nice crowned steel uh, back spine and a crowned spine on the blade. Nice Italian production here. And good walk and talk. It's it's not super stout, but it's very snappy. And, and you can definitely close it one-handed. Whoa. And you can definitely cut yourself. See, it overshoots the <laughs> that half stop. I've done this before. It'll start bleeding while, and I'll I'll pretend it's not happening. But see, see how this overshoots the back stop? It's because that spring isn't super stout. Um, but anyway, that wasn't the point I was gonna make, but now it is. <laughs> uh, this is a great little uh you could probably fit this in your fifth pocket if you wear if you've got big uh big jeans. But it's just the right size. This one uh, fits in my pocket nicely without a uh, a carry, without any sort of carry case. This is about as big as I can go with this falling horizontally, uh, and that's about a three inch, three inch overall. Oh, not overall, but a three inch um, handle length there, closed length. All right, let me set this down here. I'm gonna put this here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna. <laughs> See if I can. All right. I'm going to use this little towel to soak up the blood. This shouldn't be a pain at all. I should keep band-aids at this desk. I don't know what I'm thinking. All right. So next up, uh, Medford Knives. This is an interesting one that they sent to me a few years back when they first came out with this. Uh, and now, as I understand, and I hope I'm not speaking out of school, but I know that Ben Belkin did a little bit of consulting with Greg Medford. I hope that's not... Uh, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, and and sort of uh, kind of helped him um, improve the Gentleman Jack. And that's what this is. This is the GJ1, Gentleman Jack 1. And it's the Medford slip joint. And unlike other Medfords, it is a graceful, beautiful design, I got to say. You know, I'm, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm hot and cold with Medfords. I've had a few and I've liked them, but I've sold them. and um, I don't know, the, the designs aren't always exactly up my alley, but this one here is so nice and sleek and that titanium, uh, it's got a nice weight to it. And then right here in the spine, in beautiful script made in the United States of America, very proudly, no doubt. And then you've got a full height hollow grind on this one. First time I had seen that. A beautiful fuller, very nice blade, super sharp blade. Everything about this knife is awesome, except the action. It's it's really uh, mushy, you know. It okay. It's a knife when you're using it, uh, especially a slip joint knife. When you're using it, you're you're cutting this way, you know, and it's going against that spine. So you're probably not going to close that knife on your hand unless you do something uh, like I just did and and close it uh, one handed. And it over travels, but it's not going to on this one because it's kind of a mushy spring. Uh, but this is the first generation of this knife. So as I understand, it has uh, it has blossomed and improved. I think it's beautiful. Um, I very rarely carry it, uh, but maybe just pulling it out right now and talking about it will inspire me to do so. All right. Next up, this is this is the one that excited me a lot. Uh, when it came out, or this is one that it, that excited me a lot when it came out, and it's the Lion Steel, so it's Italian made Gitano, uh, and this is a slip joint version of a Goody von Poppel's uh, design. He makes it in slip joint. He makes it in uh, in frame lock. Uh, I highly recommend you go to the um, Instagram of Goody von Poppel's. Uh, spelled just how it sounds, G U D Y Von Popples, and check out his his stuff. It is exquisite. His handmade knives are just amazing, 
He's got a couple of uh, licensed designs out there. This is this is the one that I think is the most famous, based on the Navaja. Um, is you know the Spanish Navaja is the is the Gitano. You've got that beautiful deep diving clip point blade, uh, kind of a Spanish clip point there, and then you have titanium bolsters um, and and a and a pivot that you can loosen and tighten, and the whole thing can come apart. You know, unlike a lot of uh, pinned slip joints, you know, this can come apart. This one has the um, the clip there. So this spent a lot of time in my back pocket. It's got the clip, the crown spine, the crowned uh, spring here, and very stout action. That's why it lived in my pocket for a long time, my back left pocket for a long time after I got it because of that uh, clip. Okay, the next two are from Great Eastern Cutlery. And, you, and you're, you're going to say, hey, Bob, you said these were modern slip joints. Well, these are modern slip joints. They're old patterns created with, with the uh, traditional materials, uh, with old machines, at least they used to be, uh, but they're made now. <laughs> so they're notable modern uh, slip joints. I got two of them here. This is the Viper. Uh, this is the number 47. I, for a while, I don't know if this is still true, the most coveted of all Great Eastern Cutlery knives, um, at least when I when I got into Great Eastern Cutlery, um, just the standard models. I'm not talking about the um, the Northwoods and and those knives, but uh, just a beautiful worn cliff uh, swayback here, swayback Jack with that with that spine that bends up, and then if you if you take a close look, you see that beautiful purple dye. So gorgeous, that purple dyed bone. Nicely jigged in that cross hatch pattern. Uh, this is a Northfield. Oh, no, this is a Tidiute. This is in Tidiute dress, if you will. So slightly less fancy. Man, I love that. Beautiful. And uh, one of my favorite uh, Jack Wolf knives is is designed after this or or inspired by knives like that, including the 47 Viper this way back jack and then the last one i want to show just another beautiful example of a great eastern cutlery and this uh, is something the only one we're going to talk about today that is a double blade i wanted to show a multi-bladed knife this is the number 86 by uh great eastern cutlery and this is in the northfield dress so it's a little fancier you got the cloud shield this one is with the um, faux tortoise shell i have this this is the only, um, no, that's not true. Well, yeah, it is true. This is the only Great Eastern Cutlery that I have doubles of. This exact one from this release, I have this one, and then the one in Autumn Jig Bone. If you look at that clip point blade, you can see how there's like a slight recurve in there. And that is so over time, you sharpen it, you use it mostly towards the tip, towards the belly there. You're going to sharpen there more so you can maintain that clip point shape longer with a little recurve like that. Uh, that is how I designed the um, the Nova one with that recurve, same concept. Great action on this. And then you have a secondary worn or a sheep's foot blade here. Such good action, I broke my nail on the little sheep's foot. Yeah, great knife. I got my brother one, he carries his all the time. Me, I have so many knives. I. The rotation, you know. Okay, so those are five notable slip joints. Modern because they're made today. Uh, these two, of course, are very traditional in um, in inspiration uh, and in materials. These traditional in inspiration. This just modern, uh, but uh, but going for something from a uh, from a different class of knife than um, Greg Medford is used to. All right, let's get to these Jack Wolf knives. Now they have. Uh, single, single-handedly, single-bladedly, uh, brought me back into slip joints after a fallow period. Um, you know, when when I first started the channel, I talked a lot about slip joints, and then they kind of went away for a while. And uh, modern modern uh, knives were the big modern locking knives were the big topic. And then uh, I've been on fixed blades for a long time. None of these things go away. It's just how much attention I'm spending on on these things at a time and. These have brought back slip joints for me. Uh, these are designed by Ben Belkin. If you're if you're brand new to this show, Ben Belkin is a 
uh, is a buddy and a friend of the show and uh, he's he's an awesome guy and uh, a great businessman and a great designer of knives and he took the classic slip joint patterns and redesigned them modernized them and had them produced by and is having them produced by someone who cannot uh, he cannot divulge but is just making these things incredibly so let's uh let's take a look at the full jack wolf knives lineup i think this is in order uh i think um so we'll start off with the we were just talking about um we we're just talking about gun stock jacks let's start with the sharpshooter jack so uh this one is in the beautiful arctic storm carbon fiber beautiful blue carbon fiber and a full height they're almost all fully uh full height hollow ground blades there's one exception you'll see it downstream here m390 blade steel incredible uh, uh walk and talk on this they all do uh, they have varying pulls. Some of them are a little stouter than others. Um, but to me, this one really op opened my eyes again to the feel of the um, gunstock jack. I, I do have that lion steel that I was just showing off. I'm sorry, that fox um, gunstock that I was showing off. But it's small enough that the ergonomics can almost um, slip by you. But right here with the size of this, uh, you really feel that. So this... Uh, Cutting with this was a brand new experience for me because of how thin behind the edge it is. I mean, these are audaciously thin, seem to get thinner uh, with each iteration, with each new model. Um, so this was uh, at the beginning, they had uh, maybe two or uh, let's see, two carbon fibers and two micartas, I believe. And then as, uh, as the lines increased, it, they would have more and more carbon fiber less and less micarta now there's no micarta all right so this is the laid back jack this is the first model of the laid back jack a beautiful sway back jack here uh i have the black micarta i just oiled uh, before the show just to give it a nice luster this is one that uh, i've carried a lot so it has uh, begun to patina in the handle naturally anyway. Um, so here you have that number 47 style. Just a little bit more pocketable. And a uh, cool thing about all of these Jack Wolf knives is that uh, they are made to fit in a standard leather slip. Okay, so this is, uh, you can also note the height of that sharpening choil there and uh they all have a nice sharpening choil and they seem to be getting taller and taller so you can get even more life out of that super thin uh blade okay so that is the laid back jack next up the little bro the little bro did not receive um wide distribution because there was a blade wrap issue meaning um when you close it the blade was hitting a part of the internals there, the edge. Um, I had a little bit of blade wrap issue. You can still actually see. I didn't fully sharpen it out. It's right under the... Let me see if I can... Right there. Right under the uh, nail nick, you can see a little a little nick there where it hits the, uh, the inside. So he, uh, Ben, ended up... Uh, he sent these out to reviewers and and then um, that issue was discovered and didn't release the knife widely. Uh, I know it will. He will in the future sometime. Uh, I just don't. I'm not sure when. Uh, but it's based on the boys knife, like the number 15 um, GEC uh, with the beautiful and simple downward plunging clip point blade with a sleeve board handle. Uh, shaped like the sleeve board on an ironing board. And um, again, Ben knows I like micarta, and he sent me a lot of the micarta models. That beautiful, natural micarta next to the gray. I love that color combination. Uh, I'd love to have an original Emerson like CQC6 in that color combination. But uh, dare we dream? Okay, so next, let's take a look at the 
canine jack. So this is a dog leg jack. Note the shape of the of the handle there. Now I was always a anti fan of the dog leg. I always thought dog legs were just ugly. And uh, I, you know, I call myself superficial uh, for a reason. Uh, sometimes the look of a knife, even if it's incredibly useful, will turn me away from that knife. But having this single bladed dog leg jack uh, redesigned by Ben Belkin in hand, look at, I mean, you can see how ergonomic it is before I even close my hand. I mean, it just, man, does that feel great in hand. You could work all day with this knife. So the ergonomics are just a huge plus. Um, make me look the look of the knife now. Make me like the shape of the handle, whereas uh, I never have before. Uh, this in a sort of a traditional basket weave um, carbon fiber looks very nice when it's contoured. I'm not a huge fan of that basket weave style um, carbon fiber, but once you put a radius on it, oh, looks so nice. Uh, expanding sort of expanding bulbous uh, spear point blade there bulbous in that uh, it widens out towards the tip. I love that. It gives it a nice big belly also rakes down that edge, uh, especially with the orientation given by the handle so that you have uh, essentially a recurve uh, as you're cutting, even though it's a straight edge there, you have that downward plunging edge. Uh, this also M390 and a nice broad full height hollow ground grind with a swedge. Swedge always helps in getting the knife in to something, um, you know, makes it a diamond at the point or sometimes a triangle at the point and uh, just makes it a good penetrator. You'll see uh, swedges on pretty much all of these here. All right, next up, this came out, I remember, right around Halloween. So it must have been October 2022. Um, the Vampire Jack. This is a really cool swell center jack. You can see uh, why it has that name. And it's got a beautiful dagger-like spear point blade that looks really awesome in that handle. Uh, perfect knife for the name, uh, Vampire Jack. Uh, so swell center. So right here, you see how it swells in the center, comes out here, comes out here. This on the lock on the um, spring side is to accommodate the pin that holds the spring in so that the blade can come further down into the handle and not be uh, so. So that blade well, if you look down inside, is almost flat, is like relatively flat. You can see a, a peak in there, but it only drops further down behind it. So that's a that's the benefit of a swell center or a Coke bottle jack. You get more room inside the handle to fit more blade. Now, in this case, the blade chosen is a nice, slender, sleek, full height, hollow ground. This is dirty. I used this one uh, a bit. It looks like there's food on there. Ew, gross. M390. Um, again, with the swedge really will help in getting in those stubborn clamshell packages. Beautiful. This one has a purple carbon fiber. It's got a carbon fiber with little flecks of purple in it. Really, really gorgeous. Not uh, overwhelmingly purple, but uh, nice little hints in there. Feels great in the hand, too, with, the, uh, with that center partition there from the swell center. Just feels great in hand. Uh, this one looks the most like a fighting knife to me <laughs> for what that's worth, which is absolutely zero. Okay, next up, uh, the one I declared to be my favorite when I came out, I, I tended to do that many times. Uh, but when this came out, I was over the moon. This is the Midnight Jack. I know a lot of people were over the moon about this one. A, um, a coffin style handle. It looks like it came off of a Bowie knife almost with a Barlow. So this is a Barlow coffin style. Barlow because it has that big bolster, that big long bolster. Uh, Barlows are traditionally work knives. That extra space on that bolster gives more rigidity sideways. And um, it also allows for a longer tang, which is housed in that uh, nice big bolster. This one has the green micarta and a gorgeous full height hollow ground M390 sheep's foot blade with that nice swedge. 
and the long pole. What a gorgeous knife. Triple fluted bolster there and a really nice shape. Man, I like this one. So when you hold it uh, with the spine flat and you look at it, you can see that the straight edge is, is uh, canted downwards or raked downward. Again, on pull cuts, that just adds to the um, efficiency of that blade in cutting because you're drawing material into that triangle that's created by the downward angled edge. Great tip on that. All right, next up, this one's very interesting. This is um, unlike all of the others. This is one that came completely from the mind of Ben Belkin. And what I mean by unlike all the others, this, this pattern never existed before he designed it. This is the Cyborg Jack. I have some oil on it, so I'm going to unoil it. The Cyborg Jack. So this has a beautiful, long Turkish clip point blade. The real long swedge reminds me a little bit of a Benny's uh, clip point. Or a um, uh, Lanny's clip. A really hollow, uh, flat, hollow, <laughs> flat, hollow, really thin, hollow grind here. I'm looking, I should have cleaned these blades. They're not all as immaculate as I'd like. And then the 900 pound gorilla in the room, that handle, that angular faceted handle. Well, it's incredibly comfortable. It feels amazing in hand. Of course it does. I mean, he's not going to release a knife that, is, um, that isn't, but it just goes to show that you cannot always judge a book by its cover. And here, um, you know, you look at an Emerson knife, you can tell it's going to feel comfy in hand. You look at this, you can't quite necessarily know. It's not obvious, but then you get it in hand. It's It's incredible. It's incredibly ergonomic. It also has a bit of a pistol grip, which angles the blade uh, downward just a little bit and, uh, uh, you know, puts it ready for work right away. And you've got the belly right up towards the tip of the blade. This is one that you're not really going to be using that tip uh, very easily, but the belly towards the tip is so extreme and the downward canting of the blade through that curve of the handle uh, makes this belly uh, a, a great area to cut with. Uh, you're not going to get the same sort of pull cut uh, precision as you will with a with a blade tipped like that. Um, but hey, just uh, just go and get your midnight jack instead. Okay, this next one, this next one, what it did for me is make me really love spear point blades. I always thought spear points on slip joints were the most vanilla of all blades. And, uh, but this, the dog leg really got me uh, hyped, but then this one uh, got me incredibly excited because it's a very thin waisted, um, spear point blade with a downward cant that is extreme here. Look, it's flat across the spine, all the way from the spine of the blade across the back of the handle, totally flat. Look at the, look at the angle at which the blade descends very steeply. You get a nice bit of cutting room in here. And then this this very uh, broad belly section gets real thin. So this is a this is a really excellent knife uh, for well, for everything. But the funny thing is is it the utility of that big, broad spear blade makes it seem more like a clip point to me. You know how these uh, where is it? Like how that clip point kind of dives down. Oh, not this one. This one. Let's look at the cyborg. How the clip point dives down. Oh, no, that one doesn't either. We'll, we'll get to one that does. But uh, a lot of traditional clip points have a downward um, belly, and then you, you grind it out, and then the clip. And, and that's what, oh, my gosh, this isn't working, is it? Uh, most of the time, spear point blades have a parallel um, spine and edge in my experience. This one obviously does not. That teardrop shape is what excites me. Also, it echoes the teardrop shape of the bullet-ended jack handle here. So this is a bullet-end jack, uh, black micarta, 
And this is the first one where they went to S90V. So I think I have these out of order. Actually, these are out of order. Okay, let me put that down. That was rough. That was rough. Next one is a Lanny's clip. And this is his, this is Ben's Benny's clip. And this is a big work knife. I say big, but it also fits in that leather case. Uh, but look at, it's much more broad. This, this knife has what I was just trying to uh, express with that traditional downward, almost recurved clip point blade. You're kind of getting that same effect here, but in a spear point. All right. So this one has a much broader handle and is based on the Tony Bowes Lanny's clip model, uh, which has become a, 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 a standard, a, clip, a slip joint standard, um, and one that uh, custom makers love to make. Um, so on this one, it is the only blade that is not fully uh, hollow ground. It comes up to that flat there. That's traditionally what the Lanny's clip does. And uh, that doesn't mean it isn't hollow ground to a wickedly thin edge. Uh, it is. <laughs> it is indeed. M390 blade steel. And this one feels like the, the biggest of them all. Um, and, and it's in contention with the big bro jack, which you're going to see here shortly. But this one has the most substantial feel of all of them. All right, next up is the Venom Jack. This one was very popular when it came out. <clears throat> Beautiful Warncliffe blade. This one is doing the same thing now with that downward raked uh, edge. Let's look, if you look at the laid back jack, it's a different case. You have uh, a straight edge going straight with the, with, the down, uh, with the finger side of the handle. Whereas this, it dips down from that finger side of the angle, putting, uh, putting the finger side of the handle, putting that tip down low for all sorts of usefulness in uh, utility tasks, pull cuts and dragging. Uh, this one has uh, S90V, and this is still M390, and that really nice fat carbon, blue fat carbon. Let's, let's see if I can get it to focus. Look at that. Man, that's nice. It's interesting. Um, I, I'm pretty sure this is not on purpose, but all of the carbon fiber that Ben sent to me, um, well, that's not true. All the colored carbon fiber has been blue. So I wonder what that means. But I love it. I'm glad that he, that's the case. I like that he's making them in pink fat carbon and orange and all that, but not quite my style. This blue really suits me and I love it. So this is the Venom Jack. Um, when this one comes back, uh, I think it'll be a blockbuster again. Uh, that has been one of the most popular. This next one is his sow belly jack. And the sow belly jack refers to the shape of the handle. It's like a sow's belly hanging, hanging low. I love the sow belly shape. I have one rough rider sow belly and that's it besides this. And, and that one has two blades. So you can't really feel how um ergonomically wonderful this is because the blade obscures that contour there so in this case you get the full use of it that's what i love about these jack wolf knives uh, the ergonomics are just incredible and you get full use of them <laughs> you know uh, this is an s90v and uh, i think this was the first one this may have been the first one where they made the switch from m390 to s90v uh have I noticed the difference in the cutting performance? I have. And it's really disconcerting. I'm just kidding. I have not. And uh, um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't, I don't have need to use my knives hard enough to know, to feel the difference uh, between them, between M390 and S90V. And I don't really sharpen them. I keep them honed and they don't get much use hard use anyway, so that they don't require the removal of steel or real sharpening. Um, but again, uh, titanium, this, in this case, natural micarta. Okay. Next up, this is the big bro Jack. I love this one. I love them all. Uh, I've been refraining from saying that, uh, but this one's awesome. Like the, uh, Benny's clip. This is a big, a big, a big stout work knife. 
And they are about the same size, but as I mentioned before, the Lannies feels bigger because it's wider. Um, very much like the little bro. Uh, the big bro is like the uh, the number 15 boy's knife, but much bigger. This, to me, is like an all-American jackknife, period. Uh, this, this was in my classic designs list a couple weeks ago, because to me, um, if you were to look up and see a line drawing illustration in the dictionary of jackknife it would look exactly like this in my, in my estimation uh very very stout walk and talk on this one i mean they all have a nice stout walk and talk but this one uh feels like it's the fact that it's a work knife has been taken into consideration and uh you know you could close it by pushing it with the thumb but i'm not going to uh because i don't want to get cut again <laughs> uh, black micarta i believe this was the last one uh where micarta was being offered and um yeah people just go for the carbon fiber it was a business decision uh ben said he loves micarta and uh, uh hopes to feature it again in the future but in terms of being a business and selling knives uh the the carbon fiber is what sells so that's what he's going with Beautiful bolster on two ends there. Okay, next. And last original design is, and by original, I mean, or last design before he loops back and starts working on redesigning some of the, the former ones. Uh, so this is the, and that's not to say he's not going to come out with other designs. I, I don't know. This is a doctor's knife with a sort of Barlow bolster here. So a doctor's knife has a, this is called the feel-good jack. The doctor's knife has a long handle, slender, with parallel um, spine and belly uh, of the handle. And these were traditionally used with a flat pommel to uh, when doctors would do home, home visits, house calls. Uh, they would have a doctor's knife in their kit and say they were going to give you some sort of a tincture. Uh, they take a pill and crush it up using the flat pommel of the doctor's knife and uh well, or they would cut it first with the with the blade in this case really sweet and acute s90v uh, sheep's foot here uh cut the pill with the with the blade grind it up with the pommel and then there was usually a second implement in here that looked like a spatula and then you stir it up in in water or alcohol make your tincture um as far as a modern slip joint um, version of the doctor's knife, I mean, could you possibly beat this? Uh, I think the doctor's knife is cool. I bought one for my dad, who's who was a physician during his in his working days, and it's made by Case, and it's very nice, but it feels uh, um, it doesn't feel as stout, and I think it's because it's long and slender. And having this Jack Wolf knives iteration of it, make you know, it's very very stout. Um, so it, you really get the full benefit of this super sleek design. This is one that, uh, I have carried not in the case, which is rare, uh, but never near it, my keys or anything like that. This has ridden in my back left pocket next to my bandana and the bandana kind of keeps it, you know, North to South oriented, uh, upright. And, uh, it's due to the long slender nature of this, that I even thought to carry it like that. So this one, man, the, this is, they're all great. They're all great. All right, I'm going to put this one down here. All right, and then he dropped a bomb and came up with this. This is the Sharpshooter Jack, a bigger version and a bolster lock version of his first one, the Sharpshooter Jack. So he's come around full circle at this point. And given us something different here. Nice, broad S90V blade. Uh, nice and broad here. Uh, three, and a, three and a quarter inches long. Nice sharpening choil. Beautiful grind lines on this. Still have that long pull, but uh, not necessary because it's on bearings with a front flipper. And I think the front flipper is the perfect mechanism for this kind of knife because it's the least. If you had a flipper here or a thumb stud or whatever, it would look. It would look goofy. Uh, but you can use that uh, bolster or that uh, um, fuller here. I guess it's a fuller or opening 
pull there with your finger and it works great. This one is in that blue Arctic uh, carbon fiber. You got the three fluting, uh, three flutes on the bolsters. This one with the clip has gotten a lot of carry just in the pocket. So I'm getting some snail trails on the uh, blasted titanium, unlike all my others, mostly, except for that feel good jack, uh, which I keep in the nice soft suede, uh, suede interior pouches. So this one is going to age differently, and I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to this being more like my Sabenza or, or more like one of those one of those uh, modern locking folders in that I'm slightly less precious with it. Uh, but great front flipper action. The thing that's impressive, uh, besides everything about this knife, is that Ben just kind of designed a great bolster lock flipper. After designing all of these awesome slip joints and being in a slip joint mind frame, he was able to just design this. So that's the sign of versatility and uh, and talent, perhaps gained by hard work or talent cultivated by hard work. All right. Last in this list, again, come in full circle and coming to the second blade, the laid back jack. This is the second version of the laid back jack. Uh, like I said before, it comes in beautiful purple kiranite with a black blade and black bolster, or you can get it in two varieties of titanium, one sort of plain Jane blasted, one jigged, uh, and then two form, uh, two varieties of carbon fiber. This version with the rosewood, so beautiful. Uh, like I said before, it has that sort of hand rubbed looking blade. This is a true gentleman's knife to me. Um, uh, God. This would be one you would be proud to pull out uh, at a wedding to, to clip off the, to cut off the end of your cigar or, or what have you. Uh, look at that beautiful wood. And no uh, signs, at least on mine, of any sort of warpage or um, spacing or anything having this come from overseas with the natural materials. All right, there it is, ladies and gentlemen the full line of Jack Wolf knives, at least as it stands in August, 2023. Um, I'm very, uh, very happy and lucky to have this full lineup. Uh, this was given to me by Ben Belkin uh, in, in, in thanks for giving him a platform to talk about Jack Wolf knives in the first place. So I appreciate it greatly. And uh, we'll not only cherish these knives for that sentimental value, but they are just they are that awesome, uh, and they are worth all of the hype. All right. Be sure to join us on sun, um, <laughs> sorry, Sunday for Jake Sewell, Jacob Sewell of Bravehawk Knives. He's, uh, he is, does, uh, makes amazing tomahawks and knives and uh, is also a, uh, a producer of the Texas Custom Knife Show, a show I will be in attendance uh, at in November. So be sure to join us on Sunday for that. And then, of course, Wednesday, the next midweek supplemental. And Thursday is Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.